Hey everybody, so <clears throat> today we are looking at the lesson 1.5a, game design. Okay, we got our formative here, and we're at unit 1a, replicate student guide. So by the end of this lesson, uh, we have instantiated a prefab game object. And prefabs are not objects of the game, but rather uh, live in project files and can be called and destroyed throughout a game. It's like spawning. And play an audio source uh, file when a game object is destroyed. So, to get this going here, we want to be uh, we want to get this project guide open. So I'm going to get this open, and we're just going to follow that. Okay. So, I'll make this full screen here. Let's get a little bit bigger. All right. So we need to open our project. So we got our hub open. We open our project. Okay, there it is. So let's just go along the guide here. Uh, select your Unit 1A Replicate project. Click Open. All right. And here's how things should look. So I know a lot of us had uh, had our Mario in there, right? We had these kinds of things in there, and we did some other stuff uh, with the with the uh, extra kind of uh, goals, the stretch goals. So we just need to select Mario here. Or whatever we put in and right click and delete we also need to go to our game manager let's see open up our code get that opened up in the writer and if we had any extra game objects in here from our characters we put in we need to get rid of them and we need to get our code kind of looking back like it was okay so follow our guide our audio source should look like this okay explosion prefab nothing bomb there's a bomb selected in there so if we go back to our unity guide it's exactly how it should look you can see there's nothing in in here once you go to writer okay uh, any variable you create in here shows up oops shows up right here in your game manager script. So um, if you add a character variable, you need to delete those and get everything back to the way it was. Okay. Uh, our game manager script should look like this. So basically what we had there from last time was uh, our public game object bomb, our public game object explosion prefab, and then if we press the space key, our condition was that uh, Oops, not bomb destroyed. That was not it. It was destroy bomb. Okay, all right. That's where it was. Okay, so that's how our game scene was as we left it. It should be something like this. If we press play, okay, press the space bar, bomb disappears, okay? Just uh, so you know, uh, when you're in the play mode, don't change things around. In other words, uh, anything you, you do in here or any code you do will not be updated because you're still in the play mode. So you got to exit out of play, play mode. So that's a very important thing to know. All right, so here we are. Let's see. Let's get going. So uh, we uh, have prefabs and installation. We're going to select our game manager from the hierarchy window. And in the inspector window, um, the game manager script component, we're going to click this circle right here, and we're going to add an explosion by uh, by clicking the Assets tab and searching for Explosion. So let's do that. All right. So Game Manager, if you haven't opened your script, you can double-click here, or you can double-click right here. Okay. Uh, how you do it is up to you. I typically like to double-click right there. I already have mine open, so here it is. Okay. But first thing to do is to go to the game manager and to click this right circle here. I'm going to go to, we want an asset. And we want to type in explosion. Okay, there it is. I'm going to add that. Now I will say you should notice right here the difference between the bomb and the explosion. One is blue, one is black. Okay, that's because this is a prefab. Notice the blue highlight. 
What does that mean? Well, it means that that prefab does not live as a game object. It lives actually in here in our unit 1A asset. It's, it's a particle system. It's a prefab. And we have a bunch in here. An afterburner. Okay, a dust storm, another dust storm, an explosion, another explosion. We're actually using this first one. Okay, fire, fire mobile, fireworks, flare, flare mobile, hose, hose mobile, smoke, <coughs> steam, steam mobile. Uh, what is this? Tyree, Tyree burnout smoke and wildfire. Okay, so you'll see there's all kinds of different things associated to, to these. Some of them have uh, scripts living in here that dictate, like the one we're using is this explosion. You know, there's, there's code already written for it, okay? And then there's shaders, textures, materials, okay? These are the things. Uh, these are particle systems. So we're going to, these particle systems, basically, they all combine to form these prefab and objects, which are basically like things we spawn into our game, okay? So, go back to my game manager here. So that's the difference between an explosion and a bomb. Okay, this bomb is a game object. It's just this image, okay? So there's nothing much to it. Whereas explosion has a bunch of uh, materials, scripts, shaders, textures, things like that. Um, all ready for us to go and use in our games. A lot of these things you can go into Unity, Unity and you can purchase uh, in the creation of your own game. So let's see what we do next. Uh-oh, I've been signed out. Okay, I guess I got to sign back in. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, sign in, huh? Let me sign in real quick. All right. Okay. Go back to this. All right. Refresh this. All right. There we go. I have control again. Okay. So here we are. Our game manager's uh, script component looks like this. Okay. Uh, and now we're going to add some code, okay? So you would double-click if you didn't have your code open. I already have it open. And we're going to enter in a few commands. As a matter of fact, let me make this a little bit bigger. Again, guys, step-by-step, step, these Unity guides are there for you. So in class, you should be following along with these guides. So uh, you can keep up, okay? You kind of go at your own pace. All right, I try to go slow, but uh, sometimes people need to go slower. Sometimes people need to go faster. All right, all right. So we're going to add this code: git component audio source dot play. Okay, what is git component? It allows you to get other components on the game object. Okay, uh, this script is attached to. Okay, so uh, here we're getting an audio source component and playing it, uh, playing the auto clip we put in. So what does that mean? That means. Um, here we are in our game manager, right? These are components, transform, audio source, audio source. So we want to play this explosion sound, right? Okay, we want to play that sound. Okay. And so, <coughs> let's see here. Remember, sound, excuse me. <coughs> sound sounds something like this. Oops, you can't really hear that, can you? Right, we want to play that when we explode the bomb. Okay, so let me go back to my assets. So that's what we're going to do. So let's go to our code and and we are going to add this component audio source and we're going to play it. Okay. All right, let's do that. Uh, go to my game manager, get that ready. Go to my writer script. Okay, so I'm just going to insert it right above my destroy bomb get component. I want the one with the little uh, greater than less than symbol. So I can tell it I want an audio source. And there it is. Okay. And then I need to do a dot play. There it comes up. Tab that. And there it is. Now, if you were in class, I asked you guys, uh, you know, what do you think this does? Well, most of you guys said uh, when I press the space bar, it plays a sound, that sound in our component, and destroys a bomb. Huh? Let's see if that's true. Okay. All right, let's see. There it is. Now, what's neat is uh, 
Well, I don't know if it's neat, but I can just keep pressing space. Right? I'm going to get that sound because every time I press the space bar, that's going to happen. But notice my bomb is already gone. Okay. Okay. All right, what's next? So that played the audio. We're going to instantiate this prefab we just talked about. Instantiate means basically spawn a copy. Okay. So um, bringing... Uh, something into the game that could have been an object, but in this case, it's just something you need momentarily. Okay, spawns it in, and ideally, we spawn it out to save memory uh, when appropriate. So, let's add this code. Okay, so in our writer, we need to add the <coughs> instantiate. There it is, and we're going to instantiate our explosion prefab. Comes up right there. Okay, end it with a semicolon, Don't forget those, save that, and let's see what that does. Okay, let's see what that does. So now if I press play, there's my explosion. And of course, I can still keep doing it. Okay, because why can I keep doing this? Okay, why, why does it keep happening? Well. Keeps happening because that's what it says to do, right? Every time I press the space bar, it says to play that audio source, uh, instantiate that explosion prefab, and destroy the bomb. Okay? And that prefab is, is you know, it's following some scripts of its own. So we saw that uh, in here, in the scripts, we have an explosion, a script right here that controls... Uh, what that explosion looks like the explosion fire and debris okay that's from this prefab explosion <clears throat> all right so what do, what do we got to do now it says okay we got destroy bomb but then we want a message to the console log and that says destroy let's go ahead and do that okay so in the console log we want to display that message bomb destroyed Okay, so I'm just going to go down here <coughs> and <coughs> debug, right? Debug.log, okay, parentheses, quotes, right, for our text. And I'm just going to say bomb destroyed, okay, you can type something like that, bomb destroyed, okay. So now if I save this. And I go to uh, back to Unity here. And I click console. I'm just going to press clear. <clears throat> just ignore these messages. Now, when I play this and I explode my bomb, I get the message. Of course, I can keep doing it right now. Notice how every time I do it, there's like another temporary game object in there, right? In each one, has other things attached to it, okay? Usually these are the children we talked about, okay? So if I keep exploding my bomb, notice my message too also says it's happened 14 times, okay? So that's how many times I've pressed the space bar, okay? Ideally in a game, we don't, we don't want all the stuff to keep spawning. Notice it says clone, okay? Um, but we'll fix that in a minute. All right. Let's end that. Let's go back to our project window. Okay. All right. So here we are. We got that. And we're going to do one more step. Well, one more thing. I see a couple steps. So what is that? Well, save your script. Okay. We played it. We've seen that. We know what the debug log does. It puts messages in the console. Commonly used for debugging, okay? So in other words, uh, when we're running things, we can test it out in the console window. It could be a mathematical expression. It could be many things, okay, that we're testing. In this case, we're just testing a message, okay? All right. Um, what do you think will happen if you type debug? Well, this must be for the next one. Okay, we're going to just move this down a bit. Oops, that's not the way to go. That just moves everything down. Uh, this should probably all be down here. 
So let's see. I wonder if I can just put this in right here. All right. There we go. Okay. So we're down at the next step. And uh, we're going to enter a new variable called bomb health. Okay. <clears throat> bomb health. It's a new vari variable. It's going to keep track of our bomb. We're going to give it some health, some hit points. Okay. We're going to kind of do that. So let's go to our script. And we're going to put it in right underneath our other variables. It's a public variable. Again, it means it's accessible to other scripts. It's going to be an integer this time, not a game object. In other words, it's just going to be an int, integer, negative numbers, positive numbers. And we're going to call it bomb health. Okay. All right. And uh, remember, when we name variables, unlike all the... Um, the scripts we name, or the uh, the save files, the first letter, the first word is lowercase. And everything else, every first letter, every other word is uppercase. Okay, so we got a public int, we got a bomb health, but we got to set it to some initial value. We're going to give our bomb health three. Okay, it's called initializing the variable. Okay, we've declared it, but now we need to initialize it. Okay, so here it's declared. We're going to initialize it down here in void start because uh, that's typically where uh, you would want to give something an initial value if that's what you want, right? Start is called before the first frame update. So all this stuff happens once. So let's go ahead and set our bomb health equal to 3. Okay, we got a bomb health equal to 3. Now notice when we save this, let me go back to Unity. Okay. <clears throat> we go to our game manager. Notice we got a bomb health right now. It's uh, it's a new variable. It's there. It's zero because we initialized it. And if I press play, notice it's now at three. Of course, it doesn't go down when I press the space bar because I haven't coded that yet. So let's see what we got to do. Uh, says, uh, what do you think will happen when you, if you type debug.log bomb health instead of destroyed in line 29? What about debug.log bomb health? Well, uh, <clears throat> if you type in bomb health with no quotes, it's going to give you that three. Okay? And if you type bomb health in quotes, it's going to just print the word bomb health. Okay? But like I said, uh, we can see the bomb health. As long as when we play our game, we have the game manager selected, we can see it right there. We can change it. So we can use either one to see what our health is. Okay. All right. Okay. So now uh, we have something to do here. I think I'm just going to bring this up a bit. Bring that down a bit. Okay. It says in void update with your pre-existing if statement, add bomb health. Uh, Minus equals one. What does that do? Let's see. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to go right above here. Bomb health. Minus equals one. Okay, oops, I'm going to make a space there. Just make it easier to read. So, what do you think that does? Well, minus equals means, uh, <coughs> minus equals means, it's, all right, it's right there. I guess I could put this up here. Let's see. Let me control X that. Control X. It's going to be your new favorite favorite command. Okay. And put this right up here. All right. Okay. Minus equal means subtract the left side by the right side. Okay. That's very confusing. Okay. Basically, what it means is decrease your bomb health by one. Okay, uh, and you can change that one to a two. That would decrease your bomb health by two every time. Okay, you could do uh, plus equals to increase your bomb health by one. You could do divide equals to divide your bomb health by one. Okay, so from whatever from whatever it currently is. So if it's three and I divide by one, I end up with a three. So that would make no sense to divide equals. You'd want to divide it by something else. Okay. Times equals would do the same thing. Again, again you do never want to multiply uh, something by one because it doesn't change anything, right? Anything time, times one doesn't change. 
So what this does, whenever we press the space bar now, this bomb health minus equals one, uh, it decreases it by one. So if we go back here to Unity, okay, let's see, let's clear this project window. Watch the, let's watch our bomb health here. Okay, let's play it and see what happens. And there it is, uh, three. Let's see, now it's two. Now it's one. Now it's zero. Okay, all right, that's good. Okay, so uh, that's all fine and great. Our bomb health is decreasing now every time we press the space bar. However, um, we really don't want the bomb to, um, we want it to destroy when it reaches zero. You know, that's, that's the condition we really want. So let me just, this probably should be right here. Okay. So we want our bomb health to um, not disappear. And we don't want the explosion prefab to happen until the bomb health is equal to zero, right? We learned about these double equal signs. So we're going to do that now. I'm going to show you a nice way to do it here. I'm going to move this stuff up a bit. Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you a nice way to do this. So check this out. This will save you lots of time. So again, we want an if statement in there. Okay, so... I'm going to put it in right after that. I'm going to do if bomb health, okay, is equal to zero. Then I want all this stuff to happen, okay? So here's an easy, here's a great way to do this. So I press enter. I press my left uh, curly bracket. I press enter, right? And I want all this stuff to get into there. Here's how you do it. Just highlight it. You're used to doing control C for copy and control V for paste. Well, we can do a control X, which actually copies it, but deletes it at the same time. And a control V, and look at that, puts it right up there. Okay, always very important to make sure code is in its proper bracket. So this is what we call a nested conditional. So what it does is uh, every time you press the space bar, it's decreasing our bomb health by one. And if it reaches zero, then we play the sound, then we initiate the explosion prefab, then we destroy the bomb, then we get the message. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Let's see how that works. Okay, oops, there we go. Come on. All right, here, here we go. Okay, let's see how that works. So, all right, notice my bomb health right there is three. Press space bar, it's two. Space bar again, it's one. Now it's zero. Now if I keep pressing the space bar, notice I don't get all these clones, right? So it only happens at once, okay? I would have to somehow increase my bomb health so I can keep pressing it. And at negative 23, it's never going to hit zero again, right? So um, unless I start increasing my bomb health, um, I can't do the explosion again. So that's a nice way to... Uh, Make sure we're saving memory. And this is our first nested conditional. Okay. So uh, if we go back here, see what else we got. Uh, let's see here. Again, we talk about the double equal sign. We learned that. We use a double equal to check if it's equal to zero, not the equal sign, because the equal sign is how we initialize variable values. Right? It's not like math. So in this case, if we want to check if something is zero, it's a double equal sign. Okay. Again, nested if statement. Nested because this one is inside of this one. Uh, you can think of Russian nesting dolls. If you don't know what those are, well, it's like where a little doll fits inside of a bigger doll, which fits inside of a bigger doll, and a bigger doll, and a bigger doll. Okay. Maybe you've seen them. I don't know. They look kind of like this. Russian nesting dolls. Okay. So they look like that, right? You get this little one, a bigger one, and a bigger one, and a bigger one, and a bigger one. So they, this one lives in that one. This one lives in that one. This, you know, these two live in that one. These three live in that one. These four live in the bigger one. So that's what we mean by nesting, right? This if statement now lives in the bigger one. Okay. All right. So, uh, your, everything should look, you should press the space bar three times, 
Okay. And uh, that's pretty much where we're at. Oops, what is this? Okay. Oh, this is to just check the console log. Let me move this down here. Editing these things. Okay. Let's move this on down. All right, there we go. Let's move that back up right about there. Okay. All right. So uh, the console log again. I'll put this message here. Look, I'll use Control X again. Boom, Control X. Okay. There we are. Control V. Nice. Control X is a great. Works in every computer application. Command X on a, on a Mac. Um, so we are going to do this uh, exporting. We're going to do this the next lesson. Okay. But I think you guys already know how to do that. Uh, this is the console log. It's just where you get your message that the bomb is destroyed. Okay, and so tomorrow in class, we need to make sure our hierarchy looks like this. Our script should look like this. Okay, Spectre window should look like that. And here's our here are the common issues. If you have any of these errors, maybe check these. Always check the common errors. And then tomorrow we'll try some of these stretch goals. Okay, all right, guys. Hope this helped. See you later.